Hi everyone, welcome to Gadgets with German. I'm Mark, and today we don't have a small device for our table, but we actually have a bigger device here uh, instead of our usual monitor for zooming in on the product. And this is the Element TV. And why is this interesting is because it was made in collaboration with Amazon. So you know how you can buy a Sony TV with Android pre-installed or an LG TV, they, those had WebOS from the Palm Pre you know, days pre-installed. Now you can get a TV with Amazon's Fire OS pre-installed. So instead of buying a TV and then buying an attachable Amazon Fire 4K set-top box, it's pretty much built in. And over the course of this episode, we'll tell you a bit more about that. And please sit in your questions. You can ask us anything about this TV, what's going on in set-top box land with Apple, anything in that area, and we'll be sure to answer it uh, throughout the show. So please send those in on Facebook and Twitter. So the thing to, to know most importantly to start out with that this is a 4K TV. So it has the latest technology. It's not going to give you the, you know, the higher end quality of your $2,000, $3,000 OLED TV or high end 4K TV uh, from you know, Sony or LG or Samsung. But for the price, it's actually pretty good. This is the 55 inch model. And I was actually a little surprised when I saw the, the price on this one. It's $650. It starts at $450. Uh, for one of the smaller models, that's the 43 inch. It also comes in 50 inch for $550 and a 65 inch for just under $900 at 899 So the pricing for a 4K TV combined with the price of the Amazon Firebox built in, it's actually pretty good. And I, I think a lot of these are gonna sell maybe around Christmas time and the holidays for people looking for a new TV 4K at a low price. It, it is a, a pretty good deal. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, so I think, you know, my takeaway is that for, for that price, $650, a 55-inch TV with the Amazon OS built in, it's a, it's a pretty good deal. But you're not going to get the quality that you might get out of a, a higher-end TV from Sony or Samsung, for example. And one of the other takeaways here is that you pretty much, you know, get what you get here. You don't really need to plug much in. I know at home I use a Sony TV with an Apple TV plugged in, and I find that all the apps and the over-the-air content and stuff, it works pretty well. I don't have anything else plugged in additionally. And if I had this TV, and you know, after using the Amazon Fire set-top box uh, for some time at other people's houses, oh, it just turned off here, um, at other people's houses and, and whatnot, and trying this out uh, earlier today and preparing for the show, I don't think I really have to plug much additional stuff in with this as well. So I think it would be fun to just take a, do uh, a dive through the, the interface. So this is the main uh, Fire TV interface. I'll put the volume up a bit. Um, that's where the volume control is, and it sort of gives you a little uh, nudge here to tell you what you can do to quickly control things. So some of these buttons, you can control different things. In fact, let's zoom into the remote and take a, a deeper look about, about that first before we dive in. So you can see here the remote. It looks very similar to the Fire TV remote that comes with the set-top box itself, but it does have some you know, special controls for it being part of uh, you know, the Element TV. It has their logo and such, and there's a few quick controls here. Um, some of the controls here are Prime Video, so that's Amazon's service for streaming video, Netflix, and also Prime Music, and then you have your Alexa button, and we'll dive more into that. So let's zoom back out here and take a look at the interface. So at the top, you have your home screen, and then you have different tabs for you know, your videos, things that you're watching from different providers, your saved channels, your watch list, what you've been watching, stuff from Prime, and then you have a focus on movies here from across different platforms, you have Prime, HBO, Showtime, and then TV, and then apps. So this set-top box, you know, integrated into the TV, it combines a lot. It combines the apps that you download from the Amazon store, but it also can sync in with live TV over the antenna, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in one of our, our pro tips. But the first pro tip that I wanted to show you is Alexa support. So sort of like the Apple TV and also on the regular Amazon Fire TV set-top box that you plug in separately, you can tap into Alexa. And you can hold down the microphone button on the remote to do this. So I'll give you an example here. What's the weather? Currently, in San Francisco, it's 67 degrees with partly sunny skies. You can expect more of the same today with a high of 67 degrees and a low of 56 degrees. So what I like about this is I know I, I sometimes check the weather on my Apple TV and it doesn't speak it back to you. Here it automatically does so and the interface is actually 
uh, not many people played with it yet. I actually had the opportunity to play with an Echo Show a few weeks ago. The interface is actually very similar, so there's some continuity there. Uh, another thing you can ask is, what are some local restaurants? Here are a few popular ones nearby. So you can see it taps into Yelp, and you can sort of scroll through them and, and such, and see reviews and, and all that. Now, also, you can use Alexa to play video. So here's one of my favorite videos. LeBron James Block. So you can tap the correct result here. And then it will show you the different places and apps where it thinks you would want to search such a thing. Now, this is a basketball movie. It tied that to LeBron James, which makes sense. You can look for LeBron James in Amazon Music. But you could also jump right into that search query, the LeBron James query, into YouTube. So it searched it, gives you some results, and then you can just watch the video. You've earned your 100,000 points. And there's a little bit of an ad. Can I get one more? <laughs> Probably. 15,000 points. Some loyalty programs aren't. We'll mute that for now while that's playing. Now we do have our first question coming in here. What does it mean when you say 4K TV? So 4K is the next step above 1080p. Before that, there was 720p. Before that, there was 480p. You can see the block right here. Looking forward to the NBA Finals, clearly. Uh, but you can see how quickly you're able to launch it with Alexa and whatnot. Uh, so 4K, 4,000 pixels in the ratio. It's much crisper. There's only a few content providers, unfortunately, that support this higher resolution. Uh, thankfully, Amazon is actually one of them. So with Amazon Prime, there are you know, a plethora of shows that have 4K support. Netflix has some 4K support, and YouTube is another big name with 4K support. You won't find uh, 4K in many other places. HBO doesn't have it yet. Uh, some of the other providers don't have it yet. Hulu is increasingly adding some 4K uh, as well. So there is a lot to like um, down the road coming in the 4K world as well. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, picture quality. So the picture quality is not you know, it's not the best, it's not your high-end Sony, but for the price, the $650 starting price, uh, the resolution is pretty good. Not the whole interface is in 4K, but every, everything that Amazon can control is actually in 4K. So it's as optimized as it can get. Uh, other questions here, uh, besides YouTube, but other websites, does it support? So that takes us to the apps question. Let's go to this apps section right here. Now these are a few apps that we have uh, installed here. And similar to the, to the main set-top box, you can jump in and download HBO, CBS, NBC, YouTube, Stars, Netflix, and whatnot. And something I really liked about uh, the Amazon interface and other set-top boxes that I've used, including the Apple TV, don't do this. Now, just to step back, there are some apps that require you to log in with your existing cable account in order to access content on them. But there's others that you don't really need a login to get them. And it actually will separate the apps that require a cable login from the ones that don't require a cable login. That doesn't mean they're free. HBO Now is the same thing as HBO Go, but instead of logging with your Dish, DirecTV, Time Warner, you actually sign up and pay HBO Now over the top on the side in order to get that content. Same with Showtime, CW, Crackle. Uh, Crackle actually has some free content. I've, I've watched that a few times on my set-top box. Uh, so I really like that separation. But of course, if you want to get your Fox, your UFC, you know, your, your sports, tennis, whatnot. Uh, there are some paid apps there. Twitter integration as well with the, with the Twitter app. That's across the different set-top boxes. Obviously, there's games. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. There's, there's lots to like here. The App Store is pretty packed. And again, I like that separation between free content, paid content, what requires a login, what doesn't require a login. It makes it really easy on the user to know what they're going to be getting. Now, I want to jump back into home here to get into one of our next pro tips. Now, this pro tip is all about live TV. Now, we actually have an antenna cable line plugged in uh, to the Amazon TV. And I believe Amazon is giving those away, those kits to set up antenna TV for the you know, first purchases before the device comes out during the pre-order period. And what that lets you to do is tap in to the antenna signal, like an older TV, in order to get your, you know, your basic channels, like your 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, you know, 11, 13, and whatnot. So we can actually go into um, live TV by saying, tune into NBC Live. So there you go. That is Access Hollywood. Great show. Uh, they're on a commercial break right now. 
and you know it's it's live TV. So you can mix your over the top through your internet connection, through your Wi-Fi connection or Ethernet connection with actual live TV. So if you want to see something live, you can jump right to it. You don't have to exit the set-top box experience to go to your live channel flipping and whatnot. It's all in one interface, something some of the other providers, including the Apple TV, don't nail. But Amazon does as best of a job it could do with that without going through the cable networks and striking those deals that we know are so difficult for the, for the networks to do at this point. And for those just joining us, we're talking about the Amazon Fire TV built into the Element TV. So basically, this TV, this 4K TV, running the Amazon Fire OS on top of it. And please send in your questions if you have any. We have some more coming in here. Which app store is this connected to? Can you add more apps, or are you limited to whatever comes preloaded? That's a good question. So it's not limited to what comes preloaded. We actually installed this Bloomberg TV app. It's the best app on the store uh, before we started the show. And we'll, we'll get out of that. But yeah, you can add apps. There's the Prime App Store uh, through Amazon on here. Uh, so you're not limited. There's thousands of apps on there. Uh, and like I showed, you can separate between what costs extra and what doesn't cost extra. Someone else asking here, can you compare this to the Apple TV? It's actually pretty comparable to the Apple TV, but the main difference is, in terms of what we're talking about here, is that the Apple TV is a set-top box that you can plug into any TV, whereas this TV has the Amazon Fire TV set-top box actually built in, so to speak. So it's not a separate device. But, of course, you can buy it separately. If you have another TV, like a Sony or an LG and whatnot, you can actually get this interface and all that stuff uh, onto that as well but you don't get the live TV factor that's not supported in the set-top boxes uh, currently. And speaking of which, to get live TV, do you still need a cable provider like Spectrum or Verizon Fios? That's a good question. So the live TV tune-in that we did is not connected to a Dish or a Spectrum, a Verizon, a DirecTV, a Time Warner. It's actually connected through the main antenna cable line. So it's using a little bit of a, you know, a cable at the window out there getting a signal. So that doesn't cost extra. You just have to pay for your antenna equipment or your, your signal receiver and whatnot and plugging it into the TV. So this is not a cable package. These are the basic, basic channels like NBC, CBS, ABC, CNBC, you know, your, your sub 10 channels, uh, maybe 13 as well. Uh, another question, what sizes does the TV come in? That's a, that's a good question. So these come in 43 inch, 50 inch, 55 inch, and 65 inch variations. This is actually the 55 inch. I think this is a, a sweet spot for most people uh, given the price and the, you know, the general size is pretty good. So I wanna talk a little bit more about connecting other devices. So on this main screen, we're here on the main screen, you have your inputs. So just like a normal TV, you can hook in additional devices and jump between them. So we have a PlayStation hooked up into here, and the PlayStation obviously has a Blu-ray, and then you have your other HDMIs, your composites, your component cables, and whatnot. So it's, you know, it's your normal TV, pretty versatile. The difference is, is that the interface on top of it is not your normal TV interfaces. When you buy a TV, usually out of the box, if it's not a quote-unquote smart TV with Wi-Fi like this one, it's just channel flipping, right? There's no interface at all. It's fairly basic as aside from the settings. But this is actually a pretty good interface. My Sony TV at home comes preloaded with Android, and I actually don't use it at all, partly because I find it very buggy, and the remote control is very confusing, and the process of downloading apps and such is pretty difficult. But this thing is actually pretty intuitive, pretty simple out of the box. It didn't take too long to set up. It only took a couple minutes to port over everything from the live TV antenna we talked about. So it's pretty intuitive, intuitive and I really like it. If you already have a TV, you might want to take a look at this or the Apple TV in terms of a connected set-top box. But I don't think that you could have a problem buying this one if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of a quality for the price. More questions coming in here. Do you download apps through your phone or on the TV? There is actually an app store built into here. So you can go to the app section right, and you can view all the apps that you already have uh, installed on here, right? And obviously you can install more. And there's also suggested apps. So the app store is basically integrated uh, into here. So you have your apps that are connected already, and then you have your new releases, stuff you might want to download. You have obviously uh, you know, a download section there, testing through Amazon, different channels and whatnot, sports sections, all sorts of stuff. So it's, it's fairly intuitive. I really like it, and I think it's cool that it's built in directly 
And I think we're going to see more of that. I think we're going to see more TVs. I don't think there's going to be a new you know, innovative TV that ships without some sort of smart OS built in, whether it's Android, TiVo, or, you know, of course, Amazons. Uh, one, one more question coming in here. Can you access social media? Well, it depends what you consider social media. It really depends on what apps are available for your favorite social media networks. Uh, there's a Twitter application. We showed it earlier in the show. There's YouTube. So pretty much whatever you can get on the App Store, you can access through social media. So this was the Amazon Fire TV, the 4K edition uh, with Element, an Amazon TV set-top box actually built into the TV. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.